Greetings programmers. Today we're going to talk about how to read, write, and delete cookies with JavaScript. This is actually the first in two parts. This first part is going to cover the basic mechanics of how to do that. The second part is going to talk about how to parse the JavaScript string so that you can get individual uh, values from that. But first, let's dive into a demo and show you exactly what we're going to wind up with today. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty details of how it all works and how to code it. We'll try, hi, I'm a cookie. Click set and you'll see that the cookie name test cookie will equal to hi I am a cookie so let's go ahead and delete that and voila just like magic it disappears all right let's get started writing this program you don't need anything particularly fancy to write this uh, you can use any text editor in this case since we're on Windows I'm just using plain Jane notepad to actually write this uh, if you're on Linux or some other uh, operating system you could use gedit or whatever happens to be on hand that you can use I should add one disclaimer to this uh, you need to run this program on some kind of web server uh, that could be an Apache, it could be a Tomcat, it could be an IAS, whatever it is, as long as it can process HTML and JavaScript. If you try to run it from your hard drive, uh, you probably will not get very good results. So with that out of the way, let's take a look and see what we're going to do. I think that the best way to explain this is to begin with the HTML first and then we'll back up into the JavaScript so you'll notice in the HTML uh, there's a body tag which is right here and it invokes a JavaScript routine called initialize page uh, in the case in this case all initialize page is going to do is invoke the routine that reads the cookie value and reports that on the screen if it happens to be there. Uh, if it's not there, of course, it will be uh, blank in the area where it would normally show up. The next uh, line, of course, is just that black line at the top, which uh, has the title, in this case, MacNeilData.com JavaScript Cookie Example. After that, we have another div uh, that we use some CSS to position with. And within that div is a table. That table basically contains most of the controls that we'll be using in this program. In this case, uh, the first control is a text box. And you'll notice that it has an ID name, in this case, cook source. We'll be using that ID name later on in our JavaScript to uh, retrieve the value out of this text box. The next control is a button. And you'll notice that it has a value of set. Uh, so when you actually render the button, it'll actually say set on top of it it invokes when you click on it a function called set my cookie with the name of the cookie being test cookie so as we'll see when we get into the javascript it's going to uh, look for this cookie name and put a value uh, inside that particular cookie the next uh, control that we have is this or actually I should say a table definition uh, we actually put a ID on it in this case it's named cook target 
The reason that's there is because we're going to use our JavaScript to put the results of our set my cookie and show cookie values in between uh, these two tags and it'll show up where this space actually is coded up as being so we'll replace this with whatever value uh, is set in the cookie finally there's another button that we have which is right here this is going to have delete cookie on it and when you click on it it will invoke the delete cookie function again looking for that same cookie name in this case we're going to use test cookie for that as well that's the HTML part of it next let's look at the JavaScript part now we're going to go ahead and look at the JavaScript part of this program uh, the JavaScript is contained within the script tags. So here's the beginning script, here's the end script, uh, script tag, and all of this is the JavaScript. We have about four functions here. Uh, one the, that just does the initialize page. Uh, a delete cookie, a show cookie, and a set my cookie. One of the things that you'll notice is that there's a command in two of these functions called document.cookie. Uh, that's really the heart of cookie manipulation, cookie control, cookie setting, cookie deleting, if you will, that you'll see in JavaScript and we're going to use that quite a bit and see it a lot so let's start off with the uh, show cookie uh, function which is right here uh, in this case uh, we are passing a cookie name in this case uh, if you remember in the HTML that was test cookie and we're going to use that uh, a little bit later on in this case we're not going to really use it because we're not going to parse the uh, the cookie string since we only are dealing with one value at this point it's not necessary but again in part two uh, we'll be covering that and how to look for particular cookies within a cookie string in this case we're going to just take the whole cookie string so that's what this var cookie string uh, variable assignment is all about and we're going to equal it's going to equal to document.cookie document.cookie is going to take the whole string and retrieve that for you and then we'll place it in str cookie string the second line is fairly straightforward in this case if you recall cook target is the name of the table definition that we had in our HTML and what we want to do is to put the results of the show cookie within the bounds of the table definition tags that have that name so in this case we use the document dot get element by ID the name of the element which is cook target dot enter HTML and we're going to assign it the value of that str cookie string which of course is the value of the cookie string itself you'll notice that we use that uh, quite a bit when we initialize the page when it first starts we actually invoke that the reason that's there is just in case that cookie is already present and hasn't expired or hasn't been deleted uh, that way the program will actually display it for you so that you know that that cookie is actually occupied set my cookie of course we'll go ahead and do basically what it says it sets the cookie 
again we're going to pass to the that function the name of the cookie that we're going to set which in this case is test cookie so first we have to retrieve the value right so we're going to put that value into this str cookie value variable and we're going to get it from the text box that we defined earlier in the HTML. That text box, of course, had an ID of cook source. To get it, we again use the document.getElementID command, the name of the element, and then dot value. That will retrieve it and put it in str cookie value. Next, you'll see that document.cookie uh, function again which is part of JavaScript in this case we're going to actually use it to set the cookie value so in this case we're going to say str cookie name equals to str cookie value so if you recall that str cookie name is the value we pass from the HTML into this function right here and in this case that name will equal to test cookie so in a way you could say document.cookie equals test cookie which will equal to the cookie value and at the end of that we'll do a show cookie to display the results of that setting last but not least we have the delete cookie function again we're going to take the value passed to it and assign it to the str cookie name uh, variable. And guess what? There's that document dot cookie name again. In this case, uh, we're going to say we're going to delete the cookie by changing its expiration date. In this case, we're going to use the epoch date of January 1st. 1970. Uh, that will in effect delete the cookie. So to do that you could say document.cookie equals to the str cookie name which in this case will be named test cookie and that's going to equal to or expires on this particular date. Next we'll show the cookie again or and in this case, since the cookie will be gone, it, the only thing that will show up will be a blank space. And that, in a nutshell, is how the program works. Well, that's it for this tutorial. If you want to stay up to date with our latest tutorials, hit subscribe. And be sure to leave a comment below about future subjects you might want to learn about. Who knows, we may just do a video on it. See you next time.